In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I realized this week that it was three years ago this Sunday that I first walked through the doors of St. Matthias. Richard was the senior warden at the time and looking for a supply priest and somehow got my name and I remember thinking that I'd never been to St. Matthias, so this was a good opportunity to visit someplace new. I fully expected to spend two or three Sundays with you at the most. But on the way back home to Birmingham after that Sunday, I remember calling Phyllis on the phone and telling her that there was really something special about St. Matthias and she should come with me next week. She did. She agreed with me. Mm -hmm. So now three years later, we're still here and this week I took a minute to think about how much we'd changed over the last three years. We've got some new folks. The rotten wood, the bad drainage, and mold are, for the most part, gone. We have gardens and a fountain. We feed more people with beans and rice and boxes of food than any other parish in the diocese. John is now a deacon. Matthew's in graduate school. We have two dishwashers in our new kitchen. In the Gospel of Mark, the disciples are about halfway through the three years they will spend following Jesus. Water has already been turned into wine. 5,000 have been fed with five loaves of bread and two fish from a small boy's lunch. Jesus has walked on the water. The disciples have heard and seen a lot, and now Jesus turns to these same disciples and asks, Who do people say that I am? Now, the thing we have to remember is is that most people in this day had heard about Jesus, but didn't quite know what to think about him. Word traveled fast in those days, as it does today, but that was the only form of communication. Certainly, there were no newspapers, no TV news, no Internet, no CNN, Fox News, or the BBC. Most people who had heard about Jesus from friends and neighbors had actually never seen him. But people don't change that much over time. When we don't know for sure, we tend to take those pieces of the truth that we do know and then fill in the holes with our best guesses. Some people thought that Jesus and John the Baptist were the same person. They didn't know that Herod had already murdered John the Baptist at this point in the gospel story. Others thought that Jesus was Elijah who had come back and was there now to save God's people. And others didn't know for sure who Jesus was, but thought he was likely a prophet. And I want you to remember that in Jesus' day, the prophets were sort of like our modern day superheroes. And this kind of thinking wouldn't have been that unusual. Most of the people who followed Jesus were poor, working-class people. They were not educated. Most did not know how to read. They had heard the stories that their parents and grandparents had told them about Moses and Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and King David. They believed that one day the Messiah would come and change their world But they didn't exactly know what that meant. They just knew that when the Messiah came, it would be a big deal because the Messiah would come from Almighty God. It would be the kind of big deal that happens in a manger in Bethlehem in an empty tomb on an Easter Sunday morning. And so when Peter answers that Jesus is the Messiah... I know that everyone turned and looked, and I imagine that they wondered, who is this man Jesus? Now, I can tell you that I have changed over the past three years. The other day, Phyllis was looking at a picture of our granddaughter Lydia and me and said, look how much darker your hair was back then. I think it was the light. 
I read my sermon from three years ago. This one's shorter. I think I think about God differently now. In fact, I know I do. I definitely know more about the book of Hebrews and the book of Romans. I've changed jobs, turned 60, and discovered that I can tweet. I really like Twitter. And last Friday, I was, saw a tweet from Rev. Daniel, a priest up in Toronto, Canada, who I like. And he tweeted, too many of us worship a God whose name is I was or I may be instead of the God whose name is I am. And this got me to thinking, how has my understanding of God changed over the past three years? Well, today, I know that when we gather as St. Matthias, God is here. If we're passing out beans and rice, God is here. When the choir sings and Matthew plays the organ, God is here. When we talk about God in Sunday school, when we pass the peace, I know with all certainty that God lives in us. I also know that there are people out there looking for this eternal life that we have found. I believe now, after three years, that God can do all things through us if we will have the faith to believe that God does work through us when we believe. I believe that prayer works because I've seen it do so over the past three years in the life of our parish. I believe that God is always so much bigger than we can imagine And to quote Bishop Sloan, I believe that God loves us more than our mamas. The Bible tells us that Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and that we are to grow in love and service to our Lord. If our faith, our belief, our understanding of God is the same as it was three years ago, then we need to start growing. Every day we should ask ourselves, who do I say that Jesus is in my life? And then go out and share the love we find here. We don't wait, we don't need to wait for three more years to begin. Growing in the kingdom of God should start every day brand new. Now I wonder what we'll be like in three more years. I don't think my hair can get any grayer. Maybe we will need three dishwashers in three more years. And I will bet that we can feed more people spiritually and with beans and rice. Christ will be the same Savior. We can ask ourselves each day, who is my Lord today? And who will my Lord be tomorrow? Amen.